welcome to my channel. My name is Erica and today's video is another episode of Throwback Thursday and this episode is going to be a collab with two of my dear friends here on this platform. We have Marina, her channel name is Make by Marina and we have Emily and her channel name is Makeup by Blowfish and of course I will have both of their channels linked in my description box. Now, Marina and I, we've done several collabs together, and we recently just did a Throwback Thursday collab together using the Juvia's Place Magic Mini Palette. And Emily and I have collabed together quite, quite some time ago using the Juvia's Place Nomad Palette, but the three of us have talked about doing a collab together forever, and we finally decided to get our ducks in a row and do this. Now, if you guys have not yet gone to subscribe to their channels, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing so. They are both beautiful, very creative, really fun to watch, and just awesome creators and very dear friends of mine. So I am super excited that the three of us have finally come together to do a collab. Now, we talked about, of course, what palettes we have in common for a Throwback Thursday video, and we figured out that we have the ColourPop The Child palette in common, and this is not Baby Yoda, it's Grogu, I'm pretty sure. My husband is a huge Star Wars fanatic, and he has had to correct me a million times about what this guy's name is. I'm pretty sure it's Grogu. And this was gifted to me from one of my dear friends and subscribers, Tara Masu. And it's just a lovely color story. We've got greens, earthy greens, grunge, golds, just really fun color story. And I've used this before and I loved the look that I put together. Now this shade did break, was not Tara's fault. This just pro probably got kicked around out in the street by the mailman, but it's, you know, I, I pressed it back in and it's fine. And I do think I will use that shade today, I think. Um, I think the last time I used this palette, I don't remember. I'm, I'm trying not to recreate the same look that I already did with this palette, but if I do, then you know what, sue me. So I think what I will do is start off by using, I'm gonna have to get my glasses on because of course I can't read the shade names. Holy cow. Um, I think what I'll do, I think I'm gonna start off with baby face, putting that in my transition area. And then I think I'll deepen it up with float your crib. And, or maybe, I think I'll do baby face, little frog and float your crib. And I think I'm gonna put this shade uh, droid protocol on my lower lash lines. And then for the shimmers, I really wanna use this called precious cargo. That is so beautiful. And I think I'm gonna use the force, maybe just these two shimmers in today's look. We'll see, I might throw something else in there, but that's what I'm thinking. Now I do have both of my brows done and both eyelids are primed in the P. Louise eyeshadow base in Rumor 01. I'm gonna be doing both eyelids on camera today because I came up with some questions for us to answer. Of course I did. They're very random questions. Uh, I don't think any of these questions I've ever answered before, which is shocking because I do tons of Q&A videos on my channel. So yeah, I'm just gonna be putting my eyelid together and answering the questions. I cannot wait to see what both Marina and Emily do with this palette, and of course, listen to their answers. Alrighty, so again, going into baby face and putting that in my transition area and starting to answer these questions, there are 15 questions. Number one, if you could be any breed of dog, what would you be and why? I came up with these questions and then I put them over there and I haven't looked at them since and that was probably two weeks ago three weeks ago something like that uh, so these are very spontaneous answers I promise you that uh, breed of dog huh well I love corgis I've always wanted a corgi I just think they are so cute and just delicious you know kind of just little roly-poly dogs and I feel like I'm kind of a roly-poly lady so I think that'd be great I love labs too. I've always wanted a chocolate lab and I want to name her, I want to have a girl chocolate lab and name her Hershey because she's chocolate and hers are her and she's a she. <laughs> Dumb, I know. But yeah, I would say either a corgi or a chocolate lab. And why is just because I love those breeds of dog. I mean, there's really nothing more to it than that. <laughs> Number two, what is something you've always wanted to learn how to do? I've always wanted to learn how to knit. I can crochet like little butterflies and stuff. But uh, like I never crocheted like a blanket or anything like useful other than just butterfly magnets. My friend and I, when we were like in the eighth grade, her mom taught us how to crochet butterflies and we were making them into fridge magnets. It was great. <laughs> I, have a, I have a bunch of those somewhere here in this house. 
not on my fridge, but in a box, I think. Uh, but yeah, knitting is something that I think is so cool. And you know, you can make fun stuff with, you know, what you knit. You can make hats, sweaters, socks, belts, pants, I mean, whatever you want. Uh, I actually saw on Instagram, I think it was, or maybe it was a YouTube short, this woman had knitted herself this really cute, like, kind of tank top, like uh, crop top tank top. It was so cute. And then this little skirt, she looked so amazing. Um, I don't know that I have the figure for that outfit, but it would still be just really fun to be able to knit clothing, blankets, whatever, doilies, I don't know, a tablecloth. But I really do want to learn how to knit at some point. And there are a couple places in town that they have like uh, classes open to the public. You don't have to pay for the class, but they're very affordable classes and you can learn how to knit. They teach you that. So I don't know, maybe someday I will do that. Okay. So I think that's good where it's at for now. I might go back and add some more, but I think now what I'll do is go into a little frog and put that in my crease. This is one of those sequin matte shades where the sequins just kind of fall off your lids. Number three, what is your favorite sport? Well, my favorite sport to play is tennis, although I'm not a very good tennis player. I mean, no. Like, if I went to Wimbledon, they'd wipe the floor with my butt, you know? <laughs> Obviously. I mean, not even close to that. But I do think it's fun to play. I haven't played it in years. Like, I used to play tennis quite often with a couple friends of mine when I was younger. But, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, and I also love track. Like, I ran track in like my childhood from the time I was like six until I was, what, a sophomore in high school and blew my ankle out and quit running track at that point. Uh, but like I did high jump and long jump and triple jump and, uh, you know, pretty decent. Not, not great, but decent. And then I ran sprints, like the 100 meter run and then the four by 100 meter relay. So yeah, I really love track too. It's a great sport. Um, I really do love football. I really do. Um, it's just really fun to watch. And my son played football uh, his entire childhood, basically. Well, from the time he was like in the, what, fifth grade until his senior year of high school. So seven years, I guess. It's not really his entire childhood. But, you know, he played for several years and was a great football player. Um, I also love basketball. Basketball is another sport that I really love. And I, you know, I used to play basketball in middle school. I played and then I just... I don't know. When I went into high school, I didn't want to keep doing that. Uh, I just didn't. I don't know why. Just didn't. Uh, but I, I love to watch professional basketball. I love to watch college basketball. I don't watch it as much as I used to. I used to be really into basketball and like knew all the players and teams and all that stuff. Uh, Rajon Rondo is my favorite basketball player ever. He used to play for the Boston Celtics, which is my favorite basketball team. Even though I do love the Portland Trail Blazers, I do, but the Celtics are my fave. And uh, I don't know if Rajon even plays anymore. Once they traded him, didn't he go to the Mavericks? I watched him for a little while on the Mavericks, but I don't know. I just, I loved him so much on the Celtics that it was hard for me to enjoy him playing for anybody else. So I'm going to go back in with this brush and just blend that out a little bit. Number four, if you could trade places with anyone for a week, who would it be? I'm going to go back into baby face a little bit. I would have to say my daughter because I would get to spend an entire week with my grandson. That would be amazing. Uh, I don't, he would not love that because he loves his mama so much. Mama's his favorite person in the world. Mama and grandpa. <laughs> he loves my husband so much. Uh, but yeah, that would be so cool to be able to trade places with her and spend that kind of time with him. Oh, I would love that so much. Oh, I would just love it. You know, give her a little break too. Like she would not want a week away from him. But if I could convince her to do it, I would do it. Okay, so now I want to deepen up the outer V. I'm going to go into the shade here called, what was this called? Float Your Crib. Okay, number five. What is one thing you've tried that you will never do again? Uh, I mean, there's lots of stuff I've tried that I won't ever do again, but I, the one thing that pops into my head in this moment is going on the ride, the skydiver at the fair. I will never do that again. 
my neighbor friend, uh, I called her TT growing up, uh, she and I went on the skydiver when I think I was like between eight and 10. I can't remember exactly how old I was. And it's this ride that's kind of like the Ferris wheel. It's like this big round thing and you're in like these little metal cages. And as the ride goes around like this, what you're sitting in spins like this. So when you get up to the very, very top, you're either looking straight up at the sky or straight down at the ground. And you know, it takes forever for them to load everybody onto the ride because it's huge, right? I mean, it's huge. And you can see the whole fair when you're up there. Um, and so we get in the ride together and we're up at the very, very top and they're still loading people into the ride. And we're looking straight down at the ground and the seatbelt that we have around our waist snaps. And we both go flying straight towards the like metal shield thing that's on the front of the cage that we're in that you, you can see through it. And that is held together by a pin, like this metal pin. And I'm like, oh, and the doors are starting to like, acting like they're going to open up and I'm like looking at that pin going don't you dare don't you dare break or we're going to fall out of here so there happened to be a couple that was in the little cage in front of us and the way they were facing they were looking right at us and the guy was like girls because we were screaming and terrified and they have really loud music playing so nobody on the ground could hear us and we were way high up even if there was no music I don't know that they could have heard us Anyway, this guy's like, girls, calm down and look at me. Listen to me. He's like, brace your hands and feet on the front of the ride and push yourselves back into your seat and grab that seat belt and knot it around your waist, like double knot it as tight as you can. And so we did do that and it was okay. You know, we were able to stay on the ride, but I was absolutely terrified. I'm going to go back in with this brush and blend that because I made a big edge right there. I was just absolutely panicked and angry and you know we were in tears and we were just absolutely terrified of course so every time we would go around we would scream at the guy that was running the ride to stop the ride and let us off and of course he couldn't hear us so when we finally got off that ride I just looked at my friend and I said don't you dare ever ask me to go on that again and she's like oh don't worry I don't ever want to go again either it was really scary so yeah I will never ever again go on the skydiver ride. I totally blew that up too high. So I'm gonna go back in with baby face and chill that out. Jeez, that brush is a little too big for the outer V, but hey, I can fix this, I think. Yeah, it's fixing it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, number six. Which one of your five senses would you say is the strongest? Well, my eyesight's not the strongest. Determine that over the past year or so. Uh, I guess I would say smell. I can smell pretty much anything and that's a good thing and also a curse because when you're around stuff that doesn't smell good and that's all you can smell it's like wonderful so yeah I don't love that aspect of it you know my, my sense of taste I think is fine um my sense of touch is fine I guess but yeah I guess if I you know, obviously you have to pick one I would say smell I feel like I can smell things the best out of all of my senses. I'm loving this. I love how these shades all blend together. Even though I kind of blew that up a little bit, I was able to fix it, so that's awesome. So now I wanna go into the shimmers. I'm gonna go into this one here first called The Force and put that right here. And then I'll put this lighter one, kind of a greedy gold called Precious Cargo towards the front. Number seven, if you had a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> God, what would my warning label say, huh? Uh, gigantic dork. Beware of the gigantic dork is what mine would say. <laughs> or can't see anything, so watch out. Oh, geez. I mean, I've got to go to the eye doctor, and I really think what I need are, are contacts. Uh, or just having, you know, full-time glasses wearing. But that, that would be tough, I feel like, to do my makeup, obviously. But, I mean, there are things I just, like... Even when I'm doing like the outer part of this eye, I can't really see what I'm doing. I just kind of almost have to do it by feel. It's weird. Uh, but that's, we just already talked about senses. So let's get over that, Erica. Let's move on. Uh, but yes, my warning label would just say, beware of giant dork. Because I am a dork and I have a really goofy sense of humor. If people are expecting like real intellectual humor from me, they're not going to get it. 
because I have like a 12 year old boy inside of me that comes out quite frequently. <laughs> Jan and Shawnee know that. Number eight, have you ever had a surprise party? I have helped throw a surprise party for a friend of mine, but I've never had a surprise party for myself. Like no one's ever thrown me a surprise party. I do think that my kids uh, might be planning that for my 50th birthday because my daughter was like, she asked me, I don't know, several months ago, uh, how I would feel about having a surprise party or if I wanted to do something really special for my 50th birthday. This brush is irritating me. I'm just gonna go with my finger. Uh, and I'm like, please do not do that for me for my 50th. I said, I just don't wanna have all that fuss. So don't do that. I said, I would much rather just have, you know, a real mellow thing just with us, my family. I don't need to have some big, you know, over the top birthday celebration. I mean, I don't have any problems turning 50 really. I used to, I used to get a freak out about it. Now I'm just like, it's 50, so what? Um, but I just told her, don't, don't do that. I don't want that. So I'm hoping she listens to me. I mean, if they were to throw me a party, it would be fine, but I just don't, I don't really think that's necessary. I really don't. And I get kind of anxious in situations like that sometimes. Like if it's for someone else, I'm fine. But when the attention's on me, I don't know. I don't, I don't love that. I get a little like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go back in with this brush now and just kind of take the edge of that shimmer off because it's pretty and I do have quite a bit of fallout, but I think part of that's just because that shade kind of broke up a little bit, but it's going to be real easy to clean off, so I'm not worried about it. That's why I do my face makeup last, because I know I'm going to end up with fallout on my face. It's just easier to do that. Uh, number nine, what is at the top of your bucket list? At the top of my bucket list is to go to the UK and see Steph. That is at the very top of my bucket list. I really hope that I'm able to do that. Uh, I really do want to start saving up some money so that I can go and see her because, you know, we're really close. She's my sister, my best friend, and I really do want to see her in person. You know, I mean, it's wonderful to have video calls with her, but, you know, how cool would it be if we were able to see each other face to face? So now I'm going to go into this shade here called Precious Cargo. And, you know, there's other stuff I want to do. Uh, I would love to just travel outside of the United States. I've never been out of the United States. And I haven't been out of the state of Oregon in going on six years. The last time I left the state was to go to California, and that was in 2018. Yuck. Number 10, if you could be any age for the rest of your life, what would you choose and why? This is a really pretty shade. Uh, age for the rest of my life? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, because I feel like with each age that I've grown to, matured to over the my lifespan, there have been good things and bad things about each year. So I don't know that I could, I don't know that I can answer that. I don't know that I can pick just one age to be, because I had great fun times in my 20s and my 30s and into my 40s. So I can't answer that. Uh, number 11, if you could look into a crystal ball and see the future, would you do it? No, I would not do that. I don't want to know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, part of me does, but for the most part, no. I'm not one of those types of people that would want to know my whole life story before I get to it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm fine with just living and finding things out as they happen. I just think that would be... It just ruins the surprise of life, you know? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think with certain, you know, things that happen like births and deaths and things like that, it might be cool to know those things. But at the same time, no, I don't know. I just, no, I would say no, I would not do that. Number 12, what is your favorite cartoon character? Favorite cartoon character? Uh, growing up, it was Scooby-Doo. And I guess he still is my favorite cartoon character. So yeah, Scooby. Love me some Scooby-Doo. You know, I also like the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. That was cute at times. At other times it wasn't. Um, I love these shades together. They're really pretty. Really like it. Although I feel like that looks funky. So I'm going to go back in with this brush and just kind of see if I can kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. Let me look back in here and see. You know what actually I think I'm going to do? 
even though I'm gonna cover this up, I'm gonna go into this shade right here, and this is called Sippin' Soup, and put that, I think it's called Sipping Soup. Again, with the glasses, jeez. Yeah, Sipping Soup. I think I thought it was called Spring Soup the last time I used this palette, idiot. I'm gonna put that over it right here, because I just don't like the edge of that gold shimmer with this, it looks funky. Number 13, would you rather be tired or hungry? Oh, geez, I'm a real treat when I'm tired and hungry. Ask my family, they're like, boo. Uh, yeah, I like that better. I just felt like that green or that gold shimmer edge looked really funky, so I'm glad I did this. Every so often, I'll just put the shimmer shade all the way out to the edge of that because I just think it looks better. Um, okay, pick one, tired or hungry? I mean, I guess if, I don't know. I guess I'd rather be tired because if I'm tired, hopefully I can just lay down and sleep, you know? Although if I can't, then I'm a nightmare, but I'm really bad when I'm hungry. I get hangry. So I'm just going to stick with tired. I'd rather be tired than hungry just because I think when I'm tired, I'm not quite as growly as when I'm really hungry. <laughs> I don't know. Number 14, what food have you never eaten, but you'd love to try? Oh, I mean, there's tons of like uh, different ethnic cultural dishes that I would love to try. Uh, I really want to try like Caribbean food. I've never had real Caribbean food. I don't think in my life I would love to try that. Um... Let's see, what else? Oh, there's tons of stuff I'd like to try that I just don't have any exposure to here where I live. You know, I mean, we do have some really cool food trucks in downtown, the town that I live in. R really good and uh, from all over the world, you know? And, uh, you know, genuine food trucks from all over the world because the people that are that own the food trucks are from, you know, like there's a Jamaican food truck, there's a... Um, uh, Ethiopian food truck, you know, and I've eaten food from both food trucks and they're delicious. Uh, so, you know, I feel like I'm getting authentic food from those regions. But uh, still, I mean, there's just, I don't know. I mean, I just live in a town where there's just not a lot of that happening here. Shawnee has discussed the Caribbean food that her family makes and eats and things like that. And it just sounds so good. <clears throat> so hopefully, hopefully one day I can actually eat that kind of food. That's what I really want to do. Let's try that because it sounds amazing. I mean, she describes the meals that her family makes that she can make, you know, that she's eaten and things like that. And I'm just like, oh, like I instantly start salivating. So yeah, that would be really cool to be able to do that. And the last question, number 15 is what's the most expensive thing you've broken? Oh God. Let me think about that for a second. The most expensive thing that I've broken I guess I, if, if, if memory serves me right, it was a crystal vase that my mom had that was like a very fancy crystal vase. It was beautiful. And when I dropped it and shattered it, she was furious because it was really expensive. And I think it was, who had given it to her? Excuse me, my stomach's growling. Somebody special had given it to her. I don't think it was like a family member, but just a really close friend of hers had given it to her. And yeah, I just dropped that sucker and smashed it. It was like a very thin crystal vase vase, and it was beautiful. Felt like an absolute ass. Um, I've also broken like the side mirrors on my car a couple times I've done that. Uh, one time actually it wasn't my fault. This kid was out in the street and kicked a soccer ball and just bam, right into the mirror and it bent it all in and then it broke off. Uh, I don't remember that being super expensive, though. I know also that I've broken uh, an antique watch of my mom's. She had asked me not to play with it. She's like, this is like it was a watch that her mom had gotten her when she was like 10. And it was very fragile, very delicate, really a pretty watch, beautiful. And I just could not help myself. And I went into my mom's room and took it out of her drawer and took it out of the little box it was in. And I broke it. I broke the band away from the watch. And I mean, it was so old that there's no way that could be repaired, I don't think. 
time she was so mad at me. She's like, don't touch things when I've told you not to touch them, Erica. So yeah, I've learned, I've learned some things the hard way. That's for sure. But I will say that my daughter, these weren't expensive glasses, but in a week span, my daughter broke eight drinking glasses. So I had to buy a whole new set of drinking glasses. They weren't super expensive, but she would just go get a glass, fill it up with something, and then just frip, drop, smash. I was like, Sydney. So I think I'm pretty much done with this look. I really like how it came together. Uh, I was able to kind of fix that blown out darker matte shade. And I, I'm really happy that I took the shimmer all the way out to the outer uh, part of the lid. So I have a ton of fallout. So I'm gonna go clean this up, do the rest of my makeup, I'll come back. This is the finished look. And I love how this look turned out. So happy that Tara sent me the palette. It's a gorgeous color story and I really enjoy playing with it. And I'm so happy that all three of us have it in our collections so we could pull it into this Throwback Thursday collab video. So of course I'll show you the palette again and go into more detail about how I feel about it. But let me show you just a couple things I threw on my face for my finished look. On my lips, I used a combination of two things. I started off with a matte lipstick from NYX Professional Makeup in the shade Siren. And I love the shade, but it's just a little too matte, a little too drying looking on my lips. My daughter gifted this to me and she didn't love it because it was too matte looking. So I thought, well, I'll just grab a gloss out of my collection and throw it over the top of that. And this is the Dose of Colors Gloss in Almond Butter. And I've never put these two products together, but really like how uh, the finish product looks, you know, both of them together. And it did definitely take away that drying look that the uh, lipstick can give. And then for my mascara, I used the Banger by Makeup Mecca again. Love this mascara. Now let's talk about the eyeshadow palette, The Child from ColourPop. Ooh, it's gorgeous. I did use this shade here called Droid Protocol uh, to line my upper lids and then also on my lower lash lines. And then I just blended this out a little bit on my lower lash lines with Baby Face. I really love the mattes in this palette. They're really nice. They're very pigmented and very blendable. And I did kind of blow this shade up a little too much on this eyelid, but this shade just instantly fixed that. And that's really what I love about this is this the mattes work so well and are so easy to blend. You know, that's wonderful. I do really love the shimmers. I just kind of feel like they blew up a little bit on my eyelids. And it could just be my application technique. You know what I mean? Like if glitter glues really work for me, they don't. Uh, maybe it wouldn't have gotten so blown up. But I do think the look turned out really nicely and the blow up part of the shimmers, I don't think looks bad. I think it's gorgeous. And I'm really happy that I did use this shade to take it all the way out to the outer corner. I just thought that looked nicer, the edge of this. I just wasn't able to get it to look the way I wanted it to. Nothing wrong with the shade, it's just my skill set. This shade is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the only two shades I didn't use were these two here. And I've, I think I've used them before and they're gorgeous. So yeah, this is a wonderful addition to my collection. I love the grungy, earthy greens and browns in here. Really fun to just put a look together with this palette and super easy. I cannot wait to see what Marina and Emily did with this palette. It's gonna be so fun to watch their looks come together and also listen to the answers to the questions I came up with. Very random, strange questions, I know. I'm, I'm good for doing that. That's one of the only things in life I'm good for doing is coming up with weird questions to answer. And uh, if you guys have channels and you'd like to answer these questions, of course, I will have them listed in my description box. Uh, and if you don't have a channel and you'd like to answer these in the comment section, I would love that. Please go to both Marina and Emily's channels if you have not yet already. Subscribe, watch their content, show them a ton of love and support. They both absolutely deserve it. I adore both of them. This was so fun to plan out and do with both of them. And I hope that we're able to do another collab together. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your lives to sit down and watch this video. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing, smash the like button, and of course, comment down below in the comment section. I love to chat with you guys there. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I cannot wait to see you guys again in my next video. But in the meantime, please take very good care of yourself. Be well, safe, happy. I'll see you soon. Bye. Drop it.